Shalom and uh, welcome everyone to class this morning. Thank you, uh, Jeffina Success, John Paul, and Zelotoli for uh, joining class. Uh, welcome, Paul, also to the class this morning. Uh, we'll begin with a word of prayer. So, can I ask Zelotoli to lead us in prayer, please? <clears throat> Let's pray. Father God, we come before your presence in the name of Jesus as we begin our class for today. May your grace abound in each one of our life, Father. Bless Pastor Selena as she teaches the uh, from your word. And also bless each one of us, Lord, so that our hearts are ready to receive what our pastor has to teach to us, Lord. Holy Spirit, you prepare each one of our hearts, Lord. We commit our life, everything into your care, and Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Zelatodi. Uh, so we began uh, looking at uh, the developmental needs of um, children in um, all ages. We looked at uh, what was the developmental needs of children across all ages. Now we will, um, and we've, we've finished looking at uh, those uh, points last class. Uh, the need for physical activity, the need for competence and achievement, the need for self-definition, uh, for creative expression, the need for positive social interaction and for structure, uh, clear limits, and um, a need for a strong attachment with positive adults. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the developmental needs that is, uh, you know, something uh, is standard for children at all ages, but we would uh, now look into the uh, specific developmental needs of children in uh, each age. So we look at um, uh, the developmental needs of children uh, ages three and four, uh, basically the preschoolers, okay? So <clears throat> these children are learning how to, you know, relate um, with people outside their family, you know, uh, for a short period of time, they're separated from their uh, families, their parents, and so they're learning how to relate with uh, uh, with people outside their family. It's a new learning experience for them. Uh, they're learning how to tell stories. They usually, um, you know, cannot uh, uh, speak, you know, long sentences and uh, in paragraphs, but just, uh, you know, uh, short sentences and very few of them. Uh, I'm not going to be going through each and every point which is presented in the slide, uh, but I will just share these uh, this notes and these slides with you, but you can just keep this in mind when you are preparing, but I will just look at uh, uh, the basic um, uh, things that we need to look for when we are ministering to children, uh, basically preschoolers, three to four years old. They're also learning to sing. So we need to, when you're leading them in a worship time, uh, just have uh, simple songs for them, okay? Uh, we look at, uh, uh, you know, physically how, uh, what are their developmental needs? They're very active. They love to run and jump. They're developing their uh, large muscles. So, you know, um, that is running, jumping, you know, you can get them to stand on one foot, balancing, walking up and down the stairs. Uh, it'll take time for them to do all of these things, but, uh, you know, uh, you can get them to do these things because it will, you know, build on their uh, larger muscles. Uh, it'll help develop their larger muscles. Uh, so even if you have action songs, you can get them to stand and sing and, you know, do all the actions. Um, you know, it's good to sit with them on the floor and not use, uh, you know, big tables and chairs. It's very difficult for them because, first of all, they won't reach from the chair to the table. So it's uh, good to sit on the floor. Um, and when you teach, you know, don't be a giant uh, in the sense of you sitting on a chair and they're sitting on the floor. Sit with them uh, on the floor. If you find, uh, if you have small 
uh, chairs which is uh, tailor made you know uh, for these uh, children in this age group uh, the kid size chairs and tables then you can use that and you know it could be good if you can also sit with them uh, in their um, level get down to their level uh, so that you're able to look them in the eye okay it's important otherwise if you're sitting up then you, you won't be able to look uh, at them always you know when they're sitting down but it's good to sit with them on the same level that they are so that you can have eye contact with them eye contact is very very um, important when you're teaching um, because that will get their attention that will know that they have to stop playing or talking or running around and listen to the teacher okay they're also growing rapidly and they have a lot of energy boundless energy but they get also tired very easily okay so don't think that they have super energy and get them to do a lot of uh, action songs and games and activities then you know they would get so tired out that they would not be able to finish any of them uh, so you need to uh, keep this in mind and keep all of the the worship time this this is, uh, you know the time they sing the songs the activities uh, even because the attention span is very less we'll come to that the story should be short uh, so everything should be very very sh uh, a short period of time because even if they have a lot of energy they get very very tired easily okay and they get tired easily and quickly uh, so they also are developing their fine motor skills, which is, you know, their hands and their uh, 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 picking up things with small objects. Uh, they won't be able to do a lot of uh, detailed craft activity. So you'll have to, if you're doing craft with them, you'll have to do most of the part. You just have to get them to, you know, maybe stick uh, in the respective places that you want to, they will not be able to also cut uh, because they're learning how to uh, use their uh, hands. Um, uh, so, you know, if you're giving them scissors and they uh, need a lot of supervision along with glue and all that, you need to help them. Others can uh, waste a lot of glue. Uh, they will not also be able to, uh, you know, uh, draw things so you'll have to draw things give them you know printed coloring sheets so that they can color even if you see they're coloring it will not be very uh, deep uh, very neat it will be all outside the boundaries um, uh, even you can't give them paints and uh, you know brushes because they won't be able to do it but they would love to do finger painting okay uh, also you can teach them songs with the uh, actions uh, but you know, hands and finger motions, but very simple um, action songs. Uh, children in this age group, you know, enjoy this uh, kind of um, uh, play. Uh, you know, uh, okay, before I uh, move to that, you know, uh, it's important that uh, for this age group, you know, when you do arts and craft with them, uh, to encourage self-expression and imagination because they're very imaginative. They imagine a lot of things. Uh, so let them just imagine and let them just express themselves in their coloring, their paint, uh, if you're having some painting for them to do or any craft activity, okay? And also when they do those uh, craft uh, or their coloring, the colors may be, you know, they might color the, the tree black, the leaves black, you know, uh, you can teach them, but then, you know, offer positive reinforcement uh, uh, by praising them. And this will just build up their self-esteem and their uh, confidence. So even if they have not colored things within the boundaries and all, and it looks really messy, you can say, hey, you did such a lovely job. But next time, you know, you, if you can do it within these boundaries, within these lines, it look really great, it'll be excellent. And then they will just be excited about uh, learning and also uh, listening to you and following your uh, instructions. Okay, children in this age group basically enjoy uh, these kind of play. Um, they imagine things and pretend play so they are very imaginative so even when you're telling them a lot of stories and narratives on the bible uh, you can just paint the picture for them you can just help the, you know uh, 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 explain to them the surroundings and how it was and how david came how goliath came and all of those things they can just imagine uh, things and uh, children in this age group 
even if they play group games, it will just be fair for a very short period of time. But they just love playing with, you know, two or three children. If that they enjoy. So even if you're having a group game, you can see them, some of them, you know, will just venture off on their own and they'll just be playing on their own with two or three uh, uh, children. Okay. So um, uh, better not to have any group games, even if you're having it, just keep it very, very short and quick. Uh, you can also have uh, group games that will involve two or three people at the same time, which they will really um, enjoy. Okay. Uh, now, about hearing and understanding Bible stories, um, they're able to listen and understand the Bible stories, but it should be very, very short and uh, uh, brief. Now, if you ask them to um, recap the entire story, uh, you know, they won't be able to give you all the details. They'll just maybe at the most remember the main person in the story and they will just be able to repeat a few main points in the uh, story. So don't get upset if, um, you know, they don't tell you the entire story in detail, like you've said, but if they're able to uh, narrate or say, uh, recall the the main character in the story and also repeat a few main points, uh, that is good enough. Okay. So mentally, they have a uh, very short attention spans. And even when you're teaching the story, they'll ask you a lot of questions. So you need to be very, very patient with them. You know, they'll ask a lot of questions uh, because they are very imaginative. They like to the reason they like to think you know so they'll ask you all even sometimes very vague questions okay so um, you need to be ready for that uh, they're also learning language rapidly so even if they're learning language you need to keep the stories and the narratives very, very, the English should be very very simple you can't speak to them like you're speaking to another adult and that is why even if you're teaching a preschooler it's important to run the story in your mind before you teach it to the children because you think hey they're only preschoolers i can tell the story but sometimes you know knowing us we can use a lot of jargons of god you know um like if it if it narrating to them joseph's story we can say famine we can say pharaoh uh you know if you're narrating to them prodigal son you can say i'm going to tell you prodigal son story and they'll under they'll be wondering what is famine what is prodigal who is pharaoh so you know when you're um uh, preparing for them, it's important that you run through the entire story in your mind two or three times so that you, you're you keeping the uh, language very, very simple and not using all unfamiliar. We'll see them then and just not being interested in your uh, story. Then the whole um, purpose of you teaching them uh, would be of... Um, you know, would not achieve its uh, full purpose and what you're trying to do. Okay. They also, because they're stepping out of home for the first time and learning to be with adults and getting, uh, you know, familiar with other people other than family, uh, they fear the unfamiliar. So if you are having a classroom for them or a space specifically uh, for them in children's church, you need to have that space for them always because they will remember that place that place will become their sense of security and if you keep moving them from place to place they get very unfamiliar and then they will cry for their uh, parents okay uh, they oh, they love to um, uh, uh, sorry in the same point uh, you know um, establish uh, also in the same uh, sense of they fear the unfamiliar they, you need to establish a consistent routine you know uh, to create for them uh, a safety, uh, a place of safety. So even if the place is the same thing, you also have to have the same routine. You know, if you're beginning with worship and then, you know, games or story time and then uh, a coloring and craft activity, you need to keep it uh, the same for them because uh, that is what they like that. And, you know, they're familiar with these things. It just helps them uh, feel more safe and uh, comfortable. Okay. Uh, they feel very important when you ask them to help. So you can assign them simple responsibilities uh, during the class activities, you know, um, and this will also help them to learn and encourage them to be independent. Um, also, you know, uh, uh, getting them to share with others, helping others. Um, 
also allow the children to practice some self-help uh, skills like putting away the toys, putting away the uh, crayons, the color pencils, you know, um, uh, uh, or even washing their hands after they do some craft activity or before you're giving them a snack to wash their hands. So get them to practice these self-help skills, which will be really very helpful to uh, them. Okay. Um, they're also very, very curious, um, you know, um, uh, so they will, that's why they ask a lot of uh, questions and what looks very ordinary for us will, you know, be full of wonder for these young children. So, you know, the leaves of the flowers, the butterfly might for us, you know, look very, very ordinary, but for them, it's like, you know, full of wonder and they'll be very excited. Uh, so, you know, provide them an environment where they can explore God's fascinating world uh, to their heart's content because during this time they love creation story you know they they love everything that has to do with uh, creation story blind men Bartimaeus the blind people how they were healed and all of those because they're so curious you know they love uh, uh, the uh, 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 you know when you paint out everything for them get them to imagine things they just love it and they're very very curious um, they have active imagination so you can use that you can get them to say you know uh, when blind man Bartimaeus was there in the in the crowd you know, everybody was standing he couldn't see so he was walking around and he could just feel himself for bumping into other people you know so just get them to actively imagine even as you're painting out and uh, narrating the whole uh, story to uh, them okay they also are uh, children who think very concretely uh, which means in a very clear and very definite way uh, and in a form that can be seen or felt Okay, so that is why you need to, you can't just tell them, you know, blind man Bartimaeus, um, uh, he wanted to be healed. So he was just standing there and, you know, he was waiting uh, for Jesus to come, uh, you know, and when Jesus came, he tried to get to Jesus, but nobody helped him. I mean, that's going to really be boring for them. Okay, but you need to say, you know, blind man Bartimaeus, he was just waiting when Jesus is going to come and he was just, you know, he couldn't see. So he was trying to listen the moment Jesus Jesus comes, he was ready to jump, you know, and go to Jesus. And he was trying to get somebody to help him. So he was asking people, he was tapping people, but people were getting so irritated and angry. So what you need to do is, you know, they like to uh, basically uh, see and feel. So maybe, you know, uh, when you're narrating the story, you can have children very close to you and you can bump them and you can, Bartimaeus, you know, he just pushed and you can push a child like this and you can touch a child like this. And, you know, the kids get very excited uh, where, because they like uh, uh, to uh, imagine things and they're thinking very concretely, but when it's seen and felt. So also you can show them videos. You can also use pictures. Uh, you can also enact the skit for uh, them. So when it comes to things like uh, this point where they think very concretely, you know, um, uh, for them, if you ask them, why does the sun come out in the morning? It, they'll say it because it wakes up in the morning. The sun wakes up in the morning because they wake up in the morning and they arise and they go about doing their things. So they see they're thinking very, very concretely. So you need to be very, very careful. Uh, you know, a child in this age group went and asked a pregnant lady, you know, what is in her stomach? Uh, so the pregnant lady said a baby. And this child said, or three or four year old child said, oh, did you eat a baby? So, you know, they're thinking concretely, which means, hey, if you eat something, it goes into your Tummy. it goes into your uh, stomach okay so uh, you need to be very careful what you're telling them because you're thinking so concretely you know and you need to explain things to them very uh, well okay they also are learning through their senses which i said you know um uh, to touch seeing smell taste hearing so you need to use incorporate all of this uh, when you are teaching them um, uh, or narrating a story, we look at this when we are looking at, um, you know, the learning styles. Okay, we'll get in, into detail and how we can uh, narrate stories using uh, the senses. Um, but, you know, in this case, when the, the child is saying, hey, you know, uh, did, did you eat the child? 
so, and that's when the child is in your stomach. So, you know, they're thinking concretely and also thinking to their senses. Okay. So you need to use their senses and also help them to, uh, when you're narrating things and telling them, they think very concretely. So you need to be very, very careful. The next one is emotionally. Uh, before we move to emotion, uh, the emotional development of children in this age group, anyone has any questions? Any questions? Okay. Uh, emotionally, these children have intense. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Divya. Okay, uh, these children have intense emotions in, in the sense that they will laugh one minute and they will cry the next minute. So you will be like all shocked. Hey, this child was just okay a minute back and now why is this child uh, crying? Okay, so it's because they have intense emotions and um, these little ones experience emotions that they don't understand. So, you know, uh, you might be wondering, why is this child crying all of a sudden when he was happy or she was happy and just playing around? Um, so, and they will not be able to also express their emotions in vocabulary. Uh, so you need to tell them, oh, are you upset? Uh, that you're, uh, you're, you know, are you sad or you're frustrated, you can't find your shoes, or you're sad, you can't find your water bottle, or you're sad that you, you know, your friend didn't share the crayon or the color pencil with you, and they will go, yes, you know. So you need to uh, help them to learn to, in vocabs, help them to express their um, feelings, okay. And also, you know, um, ask them, uh, what happened? Why are you crying? Are you sad? Are you angry? Are you upset? Are you hungry? Are you, on, you know, you can, so when they, when you give them a lot of options, then they will slowly tell you what they're really uh, feeling, okay? And also you can get them to express their emotions in, in terms of telling them to ex, uh, say what happens when they're happy, sad, or uh, angry, okay? Uh, the next one, we'll go move on to their social needs, socially, they're very, very self-centered. I'm sure you know this. They want all the toys for themselves. They want all the chocolates. They want to be first. They want all the crayons. When you give them the color pencils, just they, they just take everything and don't give it to their uh, friends. So it's important to help them to uh, learn to take turns. Okay, you use the blue color. Then in this, uh, the meanwhile, she will use the green color. So, you know, you're helping them to take turns. Uh, or maybe when there's only two or three glue sticks that you have, so you can tell them, hey, why don't you color this? In the meantime, these children will stick and then we can come back to you. So you need to explain uh, to them, okay? Uh, they also like to try new things, and that is why, you know, they'll pull out all the puzzles, they'll pull out all the color pencils, the crayons, uh, they'll dismantle a lot of things, and you can just look around and the whole place will be a big mess, okay? Uh, and you might get upset that these children are really messing up the place, but it's just part of their discovery process of how they learn, okay? So... But you can, uh, uh, like this, I, like I said, this age group, they'll also like to help. You can ask them to help in putting back the uh, things, okay? Uh, they enjoy uh, uh, playing side by side. Even if you're teaching, they suddenly go off in twos and threes and they'll be playing side by side and all of those things. So you need to get their uh, attention. Okay, and keep their attention uh, uh, span going with uh, being creative and also doing things short uh, in short sequences so that you can move on one to the next activity. Okay, spiritually, they can understand that Jesus loved them, uh, loves them. They're filled with wonder. So, you know, um, you can narrate to them about creation story and everything, and they are just, you know, filled with wonder how Jesus fed the 5,000 with five loaves and two fishes and all of those things and all the miracles he did. They love to be read Bible stories, but I think it's 
uh, it's a no no uh, for uh, me when it comes to teaching children this age about reading bible stories it's good to enact the Bi uh, uh, a bible story or you know to narrate it uh, you, you, you know using all of your uh, using your hand movements hand gestures facial expressions eye contact voice modulation and all of those things uh, that will help bring alive the uh, story if you read the bible story they'll get basically very bored okay uh, they easily accept what they are told so you need to be very careful you know what you're telling them what you're teaching them uh, they begin to see the difference between right and wrong so you can go ahead and teach them they can also experience worship you know don't think they can't experience worship they can experience worship so it's good to slowly start off in getting them to worship god uh, now to teach preschoolers effectively you know help them feel comfortable when their parents leave uh, just reiterating the points that I have said, involve all the five senses in your class activities, uh, provide times for worship, uh, also use simple songs about Jesus, you know, simple action songs, simple choruses, don't go into elaborate, uh, uh, you know, worship songs that we sing in adult church or, uh, you know, grades uh, 7, 8, 9, 10 would like to sing. Um, when you teach, always keep your Bible open so that they know you're teaching from the Bible. Uh, from the Bible, and when you're narrating the Bible stories, you can't be a very con uh, you know conscious of uh, you know uh, what what uh, the parents looking at you will laugh at you with your expressions and the way you're narrating and the excitement and all that. You know you have to you know leave out all of those things. You just have to get down to their level and narrate those stories with great enthusiasm and with your hand movements and facial expressions sometimes you'll have to have make faces like for example you know when when uh, jesus was in the, the the disciples and jesus facing the storm jesus was fast asleep and you know the disciples were so scared and they thought they're going to die and they're going to jesus and jesus you know so it sometimes it can be so exaggerated but uh, you need to do that because um, they like, you know, they become, um, they're very imaginative. So you have to enact and cry and, you know, and uh, use all those vocal expressions just to make your uh, children get excited and, uh, you know, keep their atten attention span going. Okay. Give all the children a chance to help because they love to help. Um, uh, also have activities that uh, uh, would uh, build on their large muscle movement and their um, softer muscles okay also encourage them to do things themselves and uh, because they're very curious and they're very imaginative you know you can uh, uh, keep the excitement going when you're narrating the story by uh, asking them i wonder what Bartimaeus, blind man Bartimaeus would have done when nobody was helping him to see jesus i just am thinking what he would have done i wonder so you know they'll also be thinking and you know they'll just be looking at you with the same facial expressions it's just so sweet okay uh and when you're moving on uh, from one part of the story to another give them clues what is going to happen next by asking i wonder what is what is going to happen next i wonder if jesus really healed a uh, blind man bartimaeus uh did the storm really kill all the disciples and jesus uh, what do you think happened, you know, or, uh, you know, so you can um, give them clues for the transition, the tran transitions that happen for the next part of the uh, story. Also, they, you know, because they f uh, want to feel loved and accepted at this age, emphasize how much God loves them. So good age to build on, um, on this, you know, um, so uh, get them to just fall in love with uh, Jesus. Also encourage uh, sharing uh, because they don't uh, like to share. You need to get them to, you know, encourage them to share with others. Okay, so these are the developmental needs of children, preschoolers, ages three and four. Anyone has any questions? Any questions? All of you with me in class? Yes, no. Okay, Alive and kicking, Pastor. 
Okay. Thank you. Okay. So if there are no questions, we'll move on to... Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll move on to the next uh, age group, uh, children in ages uh, 5 to 7. Um, also, uh, the same thing, these children are learning to relate to uh, God. They're also learning to relate to the people uh, outside their family circle. Uh, not for a short period of time compared to children ages 3 and 4, but this is for a longer period. So they're learning more and more about the outside world, outside their home, and what it is um, like. Okay. Um, they're also learning um, because they're staying away from their family for an extended period of time uh, during the day. They're learning uh, new skills that will help them cope uh, to take care of themselves, you know, uh, when their parents, uh, when they're away from their uh, parents, like basically eating their snack, their uh, lunch, you know, going to the restroom, washing their hands, uh, you know, get picking themselves up when they uh, fall, uh, hurting themselves. So they're just basically learning new skills on how to take care of themselves. Uh, and even as they're doing this, they're building confidence uh, in themselves, in their new abilities. They're also learning to make friends outside uh, the family, not just learning to relate to adults, but also making a lot more uh, friends. Okay, uh, they're learning to read, but they're not very fluent readers, so you can't ask them to, you know, read um, uh, from the Bible um, or take turns in reading verses. No, they won't be able to do that. Uh, but maybe if you're teaching them a memory verse, uh, it's best for children in this age also not to get them to read. But if you have a board, you can write the short verse and maybe get them to repeat after you. But it's good to teach them memory verses uh, with action so that it helps them to uh, remember. For example, you know, uh, love the Lord, love the Lord your God with all of your heart with all of your soul and with all of your mind and love your neighbor uh, as yourself so they can put their hand around their uh, their uh, friend who's standing next to them or the person standing next to them so it's good to teach them uh, memory verses with um, actions but uh, you know they are not uh, very fluent in reading so don't get, get them to read the narratives it's better for the uh, the teacher to um, you know um, narrate it to Okay, they're also perfecting the large motor skills so you can get them to do a lot of, um, you know, um, um, uh, exercises, a lot of movements, uh, you know, uh, even, um, you know, action songs that they will really um, like. Okay, uh, now. Uh, just going back to the previous point of them being uh, not being fluent readers, you know, uh, you can't even get them to, uh, uh, you know, they can't write all of the letters. They can't even write their, they're learning to write their names well. So, um, uh, you know, don't get them to write their memory verse and all of those things. Just get them to uh, memorize it, okay? And also because they will not be able to write sentences uh, because they have uh, still learning spellings, it will be difficult for them to read and uh, write, okay? The next one is perfecting their large motor skills, so their legs and their upper arms, so you can get them to organize activities that would involve running, jumping, uh, you know, and other skills that would support their physical development. Um, you know, uh, you can also get them to begin doing complex skills like, uh, you know, catching the ball, throwing the ball, uh, you know, uh, running race or jumping the rope. Or you can have some more uh, uh, games time for them, which will involve all of these things. But be careful that they don't fall and hurt themselves because they're still learning to perfect their large motor uh, skills. They're also learning to perfect their fine motor skills, which is their hand and finger movements. Um, so, you know, um, they can uh, sing songs with uh, more complex hand and finger movements. Uh, they can, you know, snap their fingers. Uh, they can uh, also, you can give them, 
you know, um, uh, uh, paints, they can begin to uh, paint, but you need to be very careful that they don't, you know, drop the paints and all that. A lot of supervision is needed. And also they can uh, create objects with uh, clay and Play-Doh. So, you know, you can use this as well, but be careful that they've washed their hands, they're not putting their hands in the mouth and they're not putting this clay into, you know, eating it up and all of those things can be very, very dangerous. Uh, they can also draw, but, you know, very, very simple things. So uh, it's good to give them a Again, uh, coloring sheets uh, which are already printed for them, so they just paint and color, and uh, and they can even if you want them to draw simple things, very very simple things that you need to uh, keep for them to uh, draw. Okay. Uh, Children in this age group uh, basically again imagine things, they pretend play, um, and uh, you know they begin to play in larger groups. So for a little longer period of time, so you can have uh, group games for them, uh, which uh, uh, you know can be a, to a little longer extensive period than compared to children ages uh, three to four. Okay, then also discovering more about uh, sound, color, taste, textures, and all of those things. Um, they love working with paints and colors and glues and scissors, but um, again, you need to supervise them and be very, very care uh, 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 careful uh, with and oversee what they are doing. Also, they love to play a lot of instruments, uh, you know, simple things, um, but they make a very loud noise because they don't cannot understand rhythm and you know tone and all of those things so it's best that you don't get them to play any musical instruments but just to sing and do some uh, uh, action songs with uh, them okay um, Acting, they can, uh, the children in this age group, you can get them to act out the stories. Uh, that can be a good way to reiterate what you have um, uh, taught them. Um, and also, you can get them to retell the stories. So, you know, you can ask uh, uh, each of them to narrate uh, the story uh, uh, in sequence, beginning from one child and then moving on to uh, the other child. But don't, um, you know, uh, uh, um, be disappointed if they're not able to share all of the details with you because uh, you know they will be able to very briefly tell you what they have understood and what they have uh, learned but that will be a good way to know for yourself if they missed out some important points which you can uh, reiterate uh, later on okay um, Socially, they seek opportunities uh, to strengthen friendship with their new friends. Um, they also uh, desire to, you know, uh, to cooperate and play with um, others. Uh, they need guidance in understanding and following basic social rules and the etiquettes that you are uh, teaching them. So it's important to teach them rules and etiquettes which will help them to, uh, you know, uh, uh, benefit them in their self-help skills, okay, and they need guidance in understanding and following these uh, uh, rules that you are telling them. Okay, so you need to be very, very patient with them. Uh, they're also, you know, understanding the importance of taking turns and also sharing uh, with others in their class, whether they are playing a game, uh, doing some activities, or even in speaking, you know, they can speak simultaneously and they want to be heard, but the importance, you need to teach them the importance of maybe putting up their hand, waiting for the other person to finish talking, and then uh, talking or complaining about each other. Um, they require recognition. Um, and, uh, you know, they want to be recognized, they want to be part of their friend groups uh, because they want to feel loved and accepted, a sense of belonging, because they're spending um, a lot, extended period of time away from their family, so they want to feel that love and acceptance that their parents have been showering, their family members have been showering upon them and giving them all that love and um, attention, okay? They also, because they're, uh, you know, building new friendships, they're learning to share, help, 
uh, think about others. So there will be a lot of conflicts they can also have because they're learning to share. They're not willing to give up and uh, things. Um, they want to do things their way. Uh, they are also learning how to follow rules and all of those things. So, you know, uh, you need to help them uh, in resolving conflicts um, and also how to you know, group dy uh, dynamics, how to work in a group setting, how to uh, relate with others, how to be patient with others and things like that. Okay. Um, so they desire participation in group activities, um, you know, which makes them feel, again, a sense of belonging and um, acceptance. Okay. So encourage and provide them opportunities um, uh, for playing. Um, and interacting with peers, give them sufficient time, uh, you know, uh, support the formation of friendships and teach them what is the qualities of being a good friend, how to say sorry to each other, how not to complain, why the why the friend did what the friend did and why they had a fight and they're crying and all of that. Help them to explain, to see the other person's pers perspective. Um, uh, also teach them the qualities of a good friend. Uh, provide clear guidance on sharing, taking turns, and uh, basic social manners. You know, um, also encourage uh, and give them activities that promote teamwork and cooperation. That will help them to learn how to work uh, as a team and to cooperate with each other. Okay. Also encourage um, understanding of their feelings. Uh, and also understanding the feelings of others uh, by how they can empathize and you know with each other, how they can understand uh, each other. It's important uh, to teach them this because at home they have been getting all the attention. Okay, when they cry, they give them what they want. Okay, so here they're learning how to uh, you know um, uh, uh, work together, how to share with others, how to care about uh, for others, and how to put others uh, first. Any questions so far? Any questions before we move to emotional development? Okay, there are no questions. We'll go on to their emotional development. They experience a wide range of uh, emotions. Uh, again, here, you know, sometimes they're just laughing, sometimes they're in tears, they're fighting with uh, their friend, the next moment they're playing. So, you know, that's how they are, uh, children are, okay? They also need guidance in uh, understanding their uh, emotions and expressing uh, what they are feeling and uh, building on their emotional vocabulary. Uh, they're looking for more independence in decision making. Uh, you know, and expressing what they want, why they want it, why they like it. Uh, so it's good as a teacher to listen to them and help them also to understand that sometimes, you know, they have to put others' preferences before uh, themselves. So slowly they will learn to, uh, you know, they will learn all of this. Also develop, help them to develop clo close bonds with the family and caregivers, um, seeking comfort and support during emotional moments. Um, um, this point I've already explained to you, so we'll just move ahead to the mental development. Um, you know, they're very curious. Uh, again, they, they have a desire to explore and understand the world around them. Uh, again, they engage in concrete thinking. Uh, they understand uh, concepts more tangibly and uh, than abstractly. So it's important for this age group when you're teaching them, you need to use a lot of visuals like uh, PowerPoints, uh, which, uh, you know, show pictures or you can use, uh, you know, pictures that they can see or, uh, you know, narrate the story, enact the story um, uh, to them, use pictures, drawings uh, that uh, that will help them understand concepts more easily, especially in this age group when you're talking about the love of God, when you're talking about sin, when you're talking about salvation, uh, sin salvation, which can be concepts for them, you need to help them to understand it more clearly in a very tangible way than an abstract way. Uh, so you need to use a lot of um, uh, pictures and visuals or uh, drawings or um, explain it to them in um, action or uh, through, you know, um, enacting it or through, um, you know, um, uh, group activities, games or even object lessons. Okay. Um, 
they are learning vocabulary a little more and, and their language skills are improving. But uh, having said that, we need to even keep the language very, very simple for this um, age group. OK, so to uh, enhance your story time with them, you know, it's important that you use a lot of props, puppets, um, uh, enact the story, use um, uh, pictures so that, you know, they're able to understand uh, in concrete uh, thinking. Also use real life scenarios um, that, pro, you know, that they can identify that is happening in their world, in their life, and they will be able to uh, understand the concepts that you are telling them, okay? Okay, uh, they're also developing their uh, skills and how to uh, solve problems and, you know, the challenges that they face to so just help them uh, and uh, go along with them uh, and teach them how to, you know, solve problems and make it simple and easy for uh, them, okay? Spiritually, they're, uh, you know, they're able to understand the stories, they're able to say the main points um, of the stories, Okay, so um, they so you need to use age appropriate Bible stories that uh, uh, convey moral and spiritual lessons to them. Uh, they also are able to understand the timeline. So you know they're able to understand historically uh, how the stories go. So you can, if you're beginning with uh, Adam and Eve, moving on to Cain and Abel, and moving on from there, they're able to understand. Uh, 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 the timelines, uh, they're able to understand how stories go together historically. They're also able to understand uh, abstract concepts such as, you know, self-sacrifice, love for others, fate, doubt, sin, guilt, and uh, forgiveness. Even though they concretely think, they think concretely uh, and in a tangible way, not in an abstract way, but they're able to understand these abstract concepts. But these abstract concepts need to be conveyed to them in a way that is concrete, which they can, you know, through their senses, their five senses, uh, uh, in a way that they are able to, uh, you know, experience and learn rather than just being an abstract uh, concept. So if you're teaching about self-sacrifice, sin, or forgiveness, you need to use object lessons. You need to use, um, uh, you know, uh, some games. You need to use some real-life scenarios that can help them to understand uh, better, okay? Uh, children in this age group, you know, the spiritual messages they need to uh, hear is uh, that God loves them. Uh, God, because basically uh, the whole concept of love again, God loves everyone, not just them and their family, but also their neighbors. God made everything perfectly. Uh, God knows you. God made you special and unique. You're valuable to God and others. And God hears our uh, prayers. God is dependable, trustworthy, always good. And you can teach them the difference between right and wrong. And God is involved with us throughout uh, history. Uh, God has a plan for the future. Uh, who is Jesus? Jesus uh, is God's son. He loves us. And, uh, you know, talking about sin, what sin is, uh, you know, um, also that Jesus came to pay for our sins. And um, because what Jesus did for us on the cross, you know, we can live for him, with him forever. And also that we can accept uh, Jesus as our personal savior. Now, why I am uh, presenting these points uh, out to you is so that, you know, if you are a teacher who is um, ministering or teaching children in this age group, uh, you will know what is a curriculum that you need to uh, build on. What are the stories you need to choose from the Bible? What are the topics? So this can help you to choose your curriculum and choose the topics that you prepare for your uh, ch for children ages um, um, five and six. Okay. They're able to understand. Okay, I finished all of this, right? The previous slide. Okay, they also, the last point is they also learn to pray together. 
you know, so you can teach them how to um, pray. But it's important at this age group that you can start teaching them, you know, about uh, love, forgiveness, what Jesus did on the cross, you know, about faith, about sin, and all of these um, uh, uh, abstract concepts. But use, uh, teach these abstract concepts by telling stories, using examples, you know, uh, so that they're able to understand in more concrete ways and concrete terms. Okay, so that is uh, ages uh, five and six. Anyone has any questions? Anything you would like to share? Yes, Divya? Yeah, yes, ma'am. I, uh, I just had a question. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, we might have like these curriculums and uh, uh, like schedules laid out for kids um, for a particular session. Uh, but um, I feel like uh, the kids are always, you know, dynamic, right? They are unpredictable how they would respond or how they will react. Uh, so uh, we might have to change uh, the way we teach or the, uh, the things, the methods that we use during the class. So I was just curious to know, like, uh, are there like any experiences that you can share wherein, um, you know, you had to completely change uh, uh, what you were planning uh, to go by. And, um, you know, just a few experiences that we, that would be helpful. And I had another question. Yeah, but I, th I think I can ask later on. Yeah. Uh, can I answer your question after the break, Divya, because it's uh, break time now? Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I'll see you all after the break and we'll begin by answering Divya's question and listening to her second question as well. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> 